The next passage is from a poem called The Pleasures of Peace, which was a sort of a protest poem about the Vietnam War, though it turned out not to be about the war so much as about the pleasures of the peace movement and the joys of peace. And this is the last part of the poem. And the big boats come sailing into the harbor for peace, and the little apes are running around the jungle for peace, and the day, that is the star of day, the sun, is shining for peace. Somewhere a mustachioed student is puzzling over the works of Raymond Roussel for peace, and the Mediterranean peach trees are fast asleep for peace, with their pink arms akimbo, and the blue plums of Switzerland for peace, and the monkeys are climbing for coconuts in peace, the Hawaiian palm. And serpents are writhing for peace, those are snakes. And the Alps, Mount Vesuvius, all the really big important mountains are rising for peace and they're filled with rocks. Surely it won't be long. And Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper is moving across the monastery wall, a few micrometers for peace. And Paolo Uccello's red horses are turning a little redder for peace. And the Anglo-Saxon dining hall begins glowing like crazy. And Beowulf, Robert E. Lee, Sir Barbarossa, and Baron Jeep are sleeping on the railways for peace and darting around the harbor and leaping into the sailboats. And the sailboats will go on. And underneath the sailboats, the sea will go on. And we will go on. And the birds will go on. And the snappy words will go on. And the tea sky and the sloped marine sky. And the hustle of beans will go on. And the unserious canoe. It will all be going on in connection with you, peace. And my poem, like a Cadillac of wampum, unredeemed and flying madly, will go exploding through new cities, sweet inflated, planospheres, ingenious hair, a camera smashing badinage, cerebral stands of atmospheres, unequal, dreamed of impeachments, candled piers, fumisteries, emphatic moods, terrestrialisms crackle, love's flat, sun's sweets, oh, peace to you. Oh, I was happy to read that again. I haven't read it for a long time.